Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We got another interesting show for you all today, and my guest is Senator Gary Hoosier. Gary was a member, a former member of the uh, State of Hawaii Senate. He is currently the board president of the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, HAPA. And what makes Gary interesting is that he has been able to coalesce the voices of uh, a number of progressive groups in Hawaii and make sure that their presence is felt in our uh, legislature. So welcome, Gary. We Thank you very much. We you uh, joining us. And, and here I am sitting down in the middle of urban Oahu, and you are enjoying the beautiful island of Kauai, which is your I, I am, and my dog is barking in the background. I if well, he keeps great. barking, I'll get up and tell him to quiet down. But, uh, well, that, that, that definitely demonstrates that you are, in fact, on Kauai. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the chickens? Yeah, that too. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get Scott uh, started. Tell us a little bit about HAPA, what it is, what it does, and uh, the rest of it. Well, the HAPA is the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. And the name basically says it all. It's a statewide organization, a 501c3 nonprofit, but it's, a, it's an alliance. Uh, we, we, we realize to get things done, we need to bring people together. So that's what we're doing. We're working with various organizations around the state. And we're unabashedly progressive. Uh, we believe in uh, economic justice, environmental justice, social justice, and we believe in action. Uh, you know, I, so you're not one of you these know, a lot people of us who sit just... around thinking about what we can do, and there's far too much talking, not enough action. And so we've uh, we've about three years old now, and we engage issues uh, real quickly on four ways. One is uh, the legislature, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. The other is is political through the election process, even though we're nonpartisan. And third would be judicial. Our organization takes people to court, entities to court, I should say and also uh, direct action, community action on the ground. So, okay. So, yeah. We're... So, we, you know, you started off as an alliance, so, and which is kind of interesting because the word HAPA means uh, not just one, but, a, 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 you know, uh, you know, half-half, many things. So, right. tell me, um, who, who are the members of your alliance? Well, the, the board of directors, is uh, statewide. We have people uh, representing uh, people like Walter Ritty, you know, a historical figure. Uh, well, one of my, one of my favorite cousins, yeah. yeah. We have uh, Paul Achitoff, the former managing director of Earth Justice, uh, Kim Koko Iwamoto. Uh, so our, our board goes around the state and around different progressive issues. Great. This year, I think, is a good example. Uh, we're going to talk about the water issue in a second. And it's it's a coalition, really. The Sierra Club, Maui Tomorrow, uh, various groups. So all the uh, groups who groups, are interested groups. in uh, supporting progressive inch, uh, issues uh, can find their way to your umbrella. So is, is that basically how HAPA works? Or? Well, HAPA is a separate organization, but our, our, the work we do is normally collaborative with other organizations. Okay. So... You, you were describing there are four different uh, approaches that you take regarding uh, political action or uh, legislative action. And, um, uh, and the first, I guess, would be uh, that you, um, well, why, why don't you go down the list again? Uh, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So. Well, the, the first one, the one we're immersed in at this moment is the, the legislature. So that's policy. So policy. And we, we impact or interact with both county-level policy, but uh, right now we're in the middle of the legislative session. We're working on progressive legislative issues. Like uh, what? Things like the minimum wage. Oh, great. Tell me about the minimum. So what's your, what are you advocating for? I mean, uh, I've heard people talk about uh, raising the minimum wage uh, for everywhere from, uh, you know, $13 to $15 to $17. And it seems to be, uh, you know, everybody has their favorite number. Um, 
but as far as I know, outside of everybody uh, somehow giving lip service to it, we haven't yet passed it, have we? No, we haven't. There, there are two bills, a House and a Senate bill. They're both uh, just going into conference right now. Uh, I'm, I'm part, HAPA is part of a coalition called Raise Up Hawaii. Raise uh, Up Hawaii. Hawaii. Appleseed is a, a big part of that, as well as other groups, labor groups, uh, young uh, progressives demanding action. We've settled on $17 as the target uh, for a couple of reasons, if I, if I could. The, the, yes. the state itself has determined that $17 an hour is a subsistence wage for a single person without a child. So why, uh, if the state's the, determined that, why are they still people who are advocating less? Well, or not at uh, all. That's a good question. The, the state legislators uh, in the House and the Senate overwhelmingly have said publicly and in writing that they support a living wage. Uh, but as you know, when, it, when the crunch comes, when it gets down to voting on bills, uh, people sometimes change their thought. The Chamber of Commerce is adamant. They don't support any uh, wage increase at all. Uh, wow. But I, I'm hopeful. You know, I really am hopeful that. Uh, at least fifteen dollars an hour will come out of this session. What did the Democratic Party, um, which a lot of your members, to the extent that they belong to any political party at all, seem to be members of? What What was the position of the Democratic Party? You know, I'm, I'm very happy to say that the Democratic Party, and I am vice chair of the party. I'm not speaking on behalf, obviously, of the party right now, but uh, the well, party has really come out strong in support of minimum wage. Sort of a, What's that? I said, nobody really speaks for Democrats, uh, you know, as uh, Will Rogers said, you know, we're not exactly an organized party. So That's tell me, uh, what did they pass in terms of their platform regarding the minimum well, the, wage? Well, the platform, uh, the minimum wage and the living wage is one of the top priorities. I'm really happy with that. And not only has the party put in writing in terms of a resolution, but the party has been actively lobbying. Uh, the chair, uh, Kaylee e. Lopez, has been down at the Capitol. And so the, uh, the party has been more active, I think, this year than it has in the past year. In and addition you, you, to, you're uh, hopeful that at least $15 an hour, what's the current minimum wage? for the, It's $10.10. 10 10 what is it? 10 10, 10. Wow. $10.10 an hour. And that must, that's been around for at least, what, got to be over, 10, over a decade. Oh, it's actually only been a couple of years. Uh, really? And that, that's one of the challenges is you ha it has to be raised incrementally. So it's difficult to go from 1010 to 17 in one year. It, it's not, not a good thing for the economy. So to avoid negative economic, you need to phase it in. Okay. All right. So what's the next issue? The next issue, uh, well, there's a bunch of them, but on the priority list, uh, legalization of uh, cannabis. For adult use, responsible adult use, as they say. You know, we just <laughs> they did, we just uh, celebrated the day before Christ, uh, New, uh, Easter this past weekend was uh, <laughs> April 20th. 420, and, yes. And my understanding uh, is that uh, somehow that's, a, that's become a con cannabis holiday. Yeah, I, I, I should know why. Uh, well, I, I found don't. out I why. Right uh, that's why. Uh, <laughs> They, they, tell, they, they said that, that actually that uh, 420 as a day for, uh, for cannabis celebrations was because mm -hmm. the uh, students at the universities and so forth at, in, um, in California, would, uh, that was their signal that they would all meet at 420 in the afternoon after classes uh, <laughs> to <laughs> recreate, you know. You know, I, I was hopeful. I mean, you know, in all seriousness, the uh, recreational use by responsible adults should be legal, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's crazy that this war on drugs has included marijuana for so many years, that uh, people have been incarcerated, their reputations and lives ruined for uh, possessions in small amounts. And 11 other states, uh, at least, have already legalized it. You know, I, I, um, I had an opportunity to have lunch with the uh, governor of the state of Washington. 
And we, we discussed this issue, and he told me that actually uh, the negative statistics in his state has, have, absolute, have um, uh, decreased as a result of their uh, using uh, marijuana recreationally, particularly in the area of drunken driving and the like. He says mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the positive thing about all of that is that the people who drink and drive tend to be aggressive and speed and... Uh, that that wasn't happening uh, with marijuana, you know, but more importantly, and uh, and I I confess to him that I have a a, a a tinge of guilt about this, and he um he uh he and I shared that, and it had to do that uh, back in the day when I had a chance to do something, uh, we would so aggressively enforce the anti-drug laws that um, we unfortunately put people in jail for using marijuana. And, uh, you know, here we are years later, and I couldn't help but think that uh, a number of young people might have had a better future if we were much more, if we were enlightened uh, back in the day. And so what he was discussing and what we were talking about was uh, creating uh, a bill that would uh, pardon uh, people who were given outrageously long sentences for uh, doing marijuana, at least in Washington, and uh, hopefully we'll do something like that in Hawaii. The, the problem, obviously, is that you know we sent some you know young people into uh, incarceration, and. Um, it affected them. They may not be the same person. You may not be pardoning the same person. But nevertheless, you know, it is a black, black spot on many of our consciences that so many young people got swept up that uh, probably shouldn't have. That, anyway. that's, that's absolutely right. And we have a chance. Uh, unfortunately, the legislature has chosen not to move forward the decriminalization or the legalization. Uh, but have uh, got a de decriminalization measure that's still alive. Well, you know, which good. Is a half step, step in, that in the right direction. Um, no, so are there any other exciting issues that uh, the Progressive Alliance is uh, or organizations are taking up at the uh, legislature? You know, there, there's there's several. You know, there's there's some pet peeves of mine, and and I have to be clear that I don't speak for all progressives. I play a, a role. Well, progressives and, are like uh, Democrats, you know. They, they don't necessarily <laughs> all agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Criminal justice reform. We talked about marijuana. But bail reform is another huge issue. You know, I didn't know uh, until a year ago or so that approximately half or maybe a little bit more than half of people that are in jail today in Hawaii are there awaiting trial. Yeah, they can't uh, pay they can't the bail. bail. So what's the well? How do you fix that? What's the proposal? Well, there's there's others other states that have done it. California is moving in that direction. There's at least one other state, and really what we're looking at is uh, small crimes, if you would, trespassing. You know, things that that poor people, homeless people might uh, might uh, get arrested for. And what happens is the bail might be two hundred and fifty or five hundred dollars, which to most of us is not that much money. Uh, but they can't afford it, so they go to jail. They, they're in jail. They lose their job. They lose their house, and it's it's a vicious downhill cycle. Uh, if the fundamental rule on on this, I've I've learned, is that if the person is a threat, or if they're a flight risk, then yes, put them in jail. Right. But if they're if they're not really going to hurt anybody, uh, or they're not going to leave the country for for a, a shoplifting crime or something, uh, then then they should be out until they're, they're scheduled for court. Well, you know, the, the whole bail issue, I, I, in my opinion, underscores the economic um, right. division in our justice system. It always seems that people who can afford it get better justice than those who uh, may not be able to. And anyway, um, we're gonna take a short break, Senator. And uh, we, uh, we'll be back in one minute. Okay. Sounds good. 
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. For those of you who are interested in the topics that we are talking about and would like to call in with a question for our guest, as well as myself, who, uh, who I will do my, which I will do my best to answer, our phone number is 808-374-2014. This afternoon, our Guest is Senator Gary Hoosier, who is the president, well, former Senator Gary Hoosier, who is the president of the HAPA, the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. And we are right in the middle of a very interesting subject where um, we're going through the various issues and positions that uh, HAPA and many other progressive groups have taken at the state legislature so welcome back uh senator welcome back so okay so prison reform uh, i what are you calling prison not necessarily prison reform justice uh, reform. criminal justice reform uh, yeah. bail reform you know and uh so what's your solution ultimately change the criteria for bailing bail or well, right, right now there is, there's a bill that's moving and the, and the uh, ACLU is taking the lead on this measure right now and there's other, other groups. Uh, that's one of the, the ways that I, I personally work and HAPA works is we don't necessarily take the lead and we're not the expert, uh, but we help uh, promote, promote the issue, promote the education on the issue and get people to the table to support it if, okay. if we believe it, it falls in line with our values. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's uh, move on. Are there any other issues like this that you have been? Uh, uh... Well, there's, there's, there's quite a few, actually. Tax reform is a big one. Uh, tax there's the, reform. Uh, REIT, R-E-I-T-S, the Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, right yeah, now, these are large, any taxes large at all? landowners. Pardon? Do the REITs pay any taxes in Hawaii? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, the, if you own stock in a REIT, or shares in a REIT, you pay in the state that you live in. And so if most of the owners are in, a, in another state, they're not paying tax on that property. So they don't, and, they, and, you, and the owners pay income tax. Uh, 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 That's or, right, in the state where they live. In the state where they live. So right. what, uh, I'm, a, I'm a developer. Let's say I'm a developer, I want to develop, uh, but I have a Hawaii corporation. In addition to any income tax, I also, as a business, would have to pay tax. Uh, Corporate the income tax. himself would pay tax in Hawaii. Right. And REITs don't do this. Exactly. And, and what happened is a lot of the very large developers who previously were paying corporate income taxes have converted their, their business model to a REITs model, which means they avoid paying those taxes. I believe it's around $40 million a year of taxes that the state of Hawaii is losing uh, because of this particular phenomenon, which started uh, a short time ago, I think 10 years ago or so. So, uh, I, I don't understand this, but wouldn't that be a, 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 a business competition issue? I mean, uh, wouldn't I, if I was the Chamber of Commerce, 
want uh, all of my members to be treated the same, not just the few that can turn their corporations into. I, I don't understand the opposition. No, it's interesting uh, that you bring that up because the, the people testifying on this issue are businesses on both sides. Uh, some businesses feel just the same way you just said, uh, that we're paying our fair share. Why, are, why doesn't everybody else pay theirs? Right. Uh, and I think this has a chance of passing uh, this year, actually. It, it, like many of these things, that uh, it's taken a couple of years to get people educated. Well, let, let me ask, well, you know, this, this interests uh, me because every time I turn on the radio, I hear uh, these ads saying wow. that somehow this, we are going to lose money or we are, we being the state of Hawaii, the people of Hawaii, the taxpayers of Hawaii. Uh, somehow going to lose money because uh, nobody will want to invest anymore if this, these taxes pass. And from your point of view, how valid is that concern? You know, I don't think it's valid at all. I mean, if, if you look at every issue, the opposition will say, the sky is falling. You know, if we don't do this, something bad's going to happen. Uh, I think people will invest in Hawaii because Hawaii is a, a wonderful place for, for the kind of investments people want. The large investments, you know, resort development, that kind of thing. Uh, if they don't want to invest in Hawaii, they won't. But it's not going so to be you don't because think of that some the, the, tax You don't advantage. think that, the tax, that a tax on a wreath is going to actually be the business determination of whether or not somebody would do a development in Hawaii? I mean, it's, no, absolutely not. Okay. Um, you know, what's interesting about our entire conversation up till now is that usually progressives are uh, associated with environmental issues, and most of what you have, we have talked about has to do with uh, social reform or, uh, or actually a business reform, economic issues. And I, I find that fascinating, but uh, you must have a few environmental issues that you would like to see the state of Hawaii improve on? Yeah, you know, the, when it comes down to it, there's, we're all in this together. You know, it's, it's all interconnected, the environment, the economy, the social justice. Uh, and I believe the economic justice issues have been neglected, quite frankly. Uh, my background is in environmental land use. And the water issue, House Bill 1326, the stream diversion issue that's been on the, in the news is an interesting uh, example of environmental issues. Why don't you issues. explain that issue? Because a lot of people have heard about it. I mean, you, you couldn't have been paying attention to any, of, any recent news reports without running right. into the uh, issue, or the water diversion issue uh, and, and the like. But, I, you know, I don't know why, but I thought this was all decided many, many years ago when Chief Justice Richardson said something about you couldn't divert water and keep it away from uh, downland users. Or isn't that a, what the law of Hawaii <laughs> says? No, it, that is exactly what the law and says. And by the way, that oh, was done on your island. Says, that's what the law says. Yeah, so uh, why that, are we having this issue? Well, the, a couple of reasons. The, most people would say because the State Department of Land and Natural Resources has not demanded that these companies comply. Uh, in their defense, they, they may not have the resources or the staffing, that kind of thing. It's a complicated issue, but it has gone on for, for decades, if not generations already. Uh, yeah, I mean, Chief law, Justice Richardson made that decision, I think, in the middle 1970s. And even I, I mean, people, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when it came out. I'm sorry if that yeah. dates me. Absolutely. I mean, businesses can use the water, but they have to get a permit. They have to leave enough water in the stream so it doesn't kill the stream. And they have to use, leave enough water for downstream users to That's be able to use it. perfectly it's a, it's a logical. Basic, yeah. So what's the but, problem? Uh, large organizations and small, but primarily large organizations. And this one, it revolves around Alexander and Baldwin on Maui. Uh, the court actually ruled again that they could not keep using the water unless they got proper permit. Okay. Uh, and they haven't done it. Uh, they, and they came to the legislature and they're back at the legislature now asking to change the law to allow them to use water without getting the long-term permits at the 
Constitution requires? I, you know, I, I, I'm not that familiar with all of the nuances of this, but it would seem to me that if the Constitution requires that something be done, I don't know if a, how, what's the idea of getting a statute to change the constitutional requirement? Well, how I think does the, that happen? Yeah, I, I don't know, and I don't agree with it. This particular situation is further complicated, if you would, by the fact that Alexander and Baldwin sold most of their land to another organization. And their sales agreement says that Alexander Baldwin will get them the water and there'll be a $62 million benefit for doing that. Well, uh, well, okay, when you say that, because I've sort of heard that in passing as well. So if, if they, uh, Alexander Baldwin sold property and they told the buyer that um, we'll get you the water. If we don't get you the water, then we'll pay the buyer sixty-two million dollars, or it will return the sixty-two right. million dollars of the purchase price. Or, or, or the, how the does sales, this all work? I, I've read the agreement, uh, and it's they, they frame it as a rebate. Wow! So, you know what? We quickly go. We, this thing is getting so interesting. But go ahead, tell me real quick. Oh, so, in the sales contract, says it's a rebate. So, if Alexander is not able, Alexander Baldwin is not able to deliver the water to Mahi Pono, Alexander Baldwin has to give Mahi Pono sixty-two million dollars back. But as you know, the water is not owned by anyone. It's, it's a public water, and, right? And it's a, with the courts. At this moment, Alexander Baldwin doesn't even have control, long-term control over the water. So, so either the, you know, so the price of the water is really like sixty-two million dollars. And if Alexander and Baldwin doesn't get these permits, uh, or if they do get the per, uh, per, uh, the extension, why shouldn't the state of Hawaii get sixty-two million dollars? <laughs> I know. Gives, our schools could certainly use sixty-two million dollars. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, that. you know, unfortunately, Gary, we, you know, I really wanted to talk to you about one of your all their exciting programs, but we got really interested in some of these core issues. And someday I, I want to invite you back. You've got to tell me, uh, well, tell the people about the, um, what's it called, Kuleana? The Kuleana Academy, yes. The Kuleana Academy, where you actually go out and work with young people, or just people, actually, and uh, yeah. give them the skills to run for office and to champion some of these issues. My understanding is that you're beginning to see success with all of this. We are. So if I can have your commitment, maybe on one of your trips to Honolulu, I'd love to do this again. So thank I would you love so to be much. there also, Governor. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure always. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And um, hopefully we'll have Gary back and we can hear about what he's doing to help young people take over the leadership of the state. Aloha.